Last time we checked in with XPO Logistics, back in September, the fast-growing provider of transportation logistics services was coming off a tricky few months, with the company's recent acquisition of logistics giant Conway putting real pressure on their share price. Since then, though, the stock has bounced back by about 18%, even as it's still more down, uh, say, about 40% below its 52-week highs from a year ago. So what are we to make of this unique logistics company that's borrowed a lot of money through a series of big deals in the last 18 months? Before the $3 billion Conway purchase, XPO took advantage of the strong dollar to snap up Norbert Dontrasangel. That's a European shipping play for $3.5 billion. Beyond the acquisition, XPO posted a smaller than expected loss when it reported its, May, its quarter in May. So can this stock get some lift here? i got to tell you, I think this company has its pulse on global com, uh, commerce. And if it can do well, then the whole stock market could continue to levitate. That's why I want to take a closer look with Brad Jacobs. He's the chairman and CEO of XPO Logistics. Hear more about how the company's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Jacobs, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Brad. Have a seat. Yeah. So we're an exciting time for your company because you guys actually came out yesterday and said you're going to make a profit. This is, a, this is actually a kind of a seminal moment for the company. We're at an inflection point in the growth of the company. So for the last five years, we purchased 17 fantastic companies. We built the company like a tank, put the whole infrastructure in place, the technology, and now we're reaping the benefits of that. Now, uh, I know that I was worried about your deposition last time, but you've done some refinancing that makes it so it's not, I shouldn't be as nervous, right? We raised two and a half billion dollars of equity in the last 18 months. Now, when I look at the company, I realize that you made this giant bet on Europe, and at the time, people were unsure. It looks like to me that you caught the bottom in Europe. Are you seeing that? That was luck. No. <laughs> All right. Well, that better, wasn't be vision. better be lucky than good. <laughs> yeah. So I was just over in the UK and in France and in Spain for a couple of weeks um, recently. The mood is better than, there than it's perceived to be from here. And uh, Brexit, I understand that you are hedged, so it's not like something we should have been worried about. Currency is fully hedged to the middle of next year. Most of our business in the U.K. is contract logistics, and most of that's on a cost-plus basis, very stable, long-term contract business. Okay, so, Brad, you've got your pulse, really, on, on pretty much everything, and, and particularly the omni-channel. I want you to describe to people, you're, the, you're Macy's, Home Depot, Lowe's. You're the, the other guy getting the stuff in the last mile. How's that business look? So we do it on both ways. Okay. We deliver the last mile right to people's houses or apartments, mm -hmm. the heavy goods, all kinds of appliances, home electronics. But we also take the reverse logistics, the returns, which is a very fast-growing business. Now, the, uh, it's pretty new that people are buying these heavy equipment. That we, you know, before, we used to buy books. We buy, uh, yeah, they buy some electronic equipment. But the heavier stuff is in vogue, and you guys pretty much have a we're huge market share in we're, that. We're the leader by, by a long shot in that. And you're right. Five, six, seven years ago, you wouldn't have bought a refrigerator or a stove on the Internet. But now, you also have, uh, in terms of free trade, you have 35% of the business comes from Mexico? Is that NAFTA business? 35% truck of our load. trucking truck business load. in North yes. America, yeah. And so what, is, what are you bringing from Mexico? White goods, mostly. Really? Okay, clients. so yeah. it's and going down into there is auto. It's auto, auto parts and full finished autos coming back. Now, where do you think we are in the uh, just overall global economy? Because our view is this, that uh, it was kind of like what you said about Europe. Things just aren't as bad, but there actually may have been, like your company, a bit of an inflection point in the last couple months where even despite Brexit, it looks like things are better. Am I just too Pollyanna? So Europe's in a different part of the okay. cycle than we are. They're not raising rates. They're having almost negative rates. Right. They're quantitative easing. They're putting capital into the markets. So it's, it's a different, it's more buoyant than it is here. Uh, all right, so that's actually not what people are thinking. I'm wondering how you can change people's impression on that. I mean, just just can happen over time. Well, I just show the results. All right. Now, I want to talk about uh, the concept. We had a, a guy named Don Wood on last week called uh, from Federal Realty. He's a great shopping center company. He was saying that Amazon isn't necessarily what we love. We love the concept of having it now. Whatever it is, we want it quickly. We want it our cell phone now. XP Logistics, good way to play that trend. Yes, so we are a leader in omni-channel logistics. Whether people go into bricks and mortar stores and buy it, we deliver it. Whether they go on the internet and buy it, we deliver it. When it's to be returned, we do the reverse logistics. I saw that you have business from, uh, from the Postal Service. Yeah. Why, why is the Postal Service using you? So we, go, we have two things. One, we do contract logistics for the Postal Service. That's something we inherited when we bought New Breed, a great okay. contract logistics company. Okay. And we also are a customer in the sense that we, take, we go into the big last mile or, uh, warehouses, mm -hmm. and we do next to the last mile. We go in there at 2 o'clock in the morning, we get everything on pallets, we shrink rack, and we put them on a 
the truck and we get them to the post office so our customers' customers can get them delivered by 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. All right, last question. I was concerned that you were going to continue to buy things and that instead you should be integrated. I know you spend $425 million in innovation technology. Are we done for now? Do you need to do more acquisitions? You've done a bunch. Now is it time to just take out costs and just uh, watch the uh, cash flow bloom? Thank you for asking me that question. <laughs> we are going to do about $1.25 billion of EBITDA this year. Very big. We have a clear line of sight to $1.7 billion of EBITDA by 2018, strictly by internal measures, primarily cost cutting, primarily global sourcing that's independent of the macro. So I'm very, very bullish on the company right now. Excellent. Well, if you do believe like I do that the economy is getting better, XPO Logistics may be the way to go. That's Brad Jacobs, the chairman and CEO of XPO Logistics. You heard him. It's an inflection point. I believe it. Stick with Kramer. <laughs>